MovieWeb.com. How did you get familiar with uh, with Blake Morrison's uh, story about his father? Uh, because I think it's one of these interesting stories because so many people hear, you know, you hear movies, see movies where people are being molested or being beaten. But here's a father who's a good father, but has many problems that like affect his, his children's life mm. over time. How do you get familiar with it? Well, I read the screenplay, first of all, and I hadn't read the book, although I'd heard about the book. The book was a big success in England when it first came out because it was the first of those kind of true life memoirs. Now you can't move in a bookshop for falling over true life memoirs. Everyone's written one. But at the time it was quite unusual. You know, there's a, and to be so honest about the dark heart of family secrets, that hadn't been done before. Um, so I, I read the screenplay, it, made, it, it moved me, it made me cry. Um, uh, and I found that the way it, it looked at ordinary life, simple life, it, it, it's, as you said, it's not, nothing terrible happens. But it's good people making mistakes and how that affects their children. I found that all very moving and very powerful, you know, and um, spoke to me. And so that's why I wanted to make the movie. And I um, spent a lot of time talking with Blake Morrison, the writer, about his life. You know, there was many questions that I had. Um, and in the end, you know, uh, you try to make a, a universal story out of all of that that hopefully speaks to as many other people in the world out there as possible about what it means to be a father, what it means to be part of a family, how you deal with secrets and anger and all that kind of stuff, you know. So it was a privilege to get to make the film. All right, and uh, just going back to the first theme we were talking about, did you ever think of maybe having uh, Arthur Broadbent's character be a little bit darker? Because you saw the bad things he did, but I always thought it was good about him that he was lovable, yeah. you know, and that you could reconcile yourself to, to liking him after the stuff that he was pulling. So did you ever feel that maybe we should make his character more darker, make him more, a little bit more mean? No, I don't think so, because he wasn't. He, he wasn't, was. Right. He was this larger-than-life, blustery, crazy character, you know, who uh, didn't really get his son. You know, they were like different. You know, sometimes that just happens. And it's nobody's fault. It's not Arthur's fault or Blake's fault. They were just like different kinds of people. And, and that was made the whole relationship very complicated. And, you know, whatever Arthur did in having this extramarital affair, however that worked out, he's not the first or the last parent <laughs> to do that. Um, it doesn't make him a bad person that he's done this thing, you know. And so I didn't want the film to judge anybody. It's not about judging. It's not about saying this person is good, this person is bad. It, I think it makes it more interesting because on the one hand, you're watching Blake, Colin, being very angry at his father. And, and, and part of you is thinking, why is he so cross? Because, you know, Arthur seems to be this very lovely, lovable character. And so I think that's what gives the film some of its tension. It would be too easy just to go, oh, Arthur's a monster, when he's not at all. You know, right. there's a lot of love there as well, you know. That is true. Mm. Uh, I was particularly uh, impressed by the young actor who played him in his teens, uh, Matthew Beard. Yes. Uh, a very good, versatile performance from him. Where did you find him? Uh, I wanted to cast an unknown. I wanted to find someone who could play opposite Jim Broadbent and be Colin Firth, but also have the be himself, you know. And uh, we, we looked for lots of kids from the north of England, and Matthew walked in, and I literally, the moment he walked in, I thought, you're it. You know, he had... I don't want to overstate it, but he had something of the brooding power of a young James Dean about him. You know, he really has a kind of force and a power to him. And he has a kind of troubled family himself. And he brought <laughs> him. But he's also a very clever young man and a good actor. He understands what it means to be still. He's very smart. He watched Colin and did just enough, took enough from Colin to, to in incorporate in his own performance. You know, he's a, a star to watch out for, Matthew. All right, what do you got planned next? Um, I'd like to make another movie. Hopefully one with guns, girls, cars, explosions. Bring it on! When did you last see your father? The last time he was healthy, active? The last time you had an argument about something? So I've been trying to recall the last time I actually saw him. The last time he was unmistakably him. 